What's up everybody, Brian here with BPS Customs and today we're going to be taking a look at this NVIDIA's newest graphics card, the GTX 1060. So the release of the GTX 1060 comes on the heels of AMD releasing their RX 480. The RX 480 kind of took a lot of thunder away from NVIDIA as they had released their higher end graphics cards, the GTX 1080 and the GTX 1070 about a month prior. As you guys can see in this video up here, I did mention that it was a little mysterious that as soon as AMD released their RX 480, there was a leak out of China about this card, the GTX 1060 which is gonna be basically the competition for AMD at this price point. Yes, it does come in at a little bit higher cost. The Founders Edition that I'm holding in my hand right now is $299 versus the RX 480's base price for the 8 gigabyte model, which is $240. So does this card make up that $60 price difference in performance gains? Let's take a look. So what has Nvidia done with the GTX 1060 to make it perform better than its competition at a similar price point. Well, first, they've started with a completely new Pascal chip. Inside here is the GP106. The initial thought by a lot of people is that the entire Pascal lineup was gonna be based on the GP104, which you find in the GTX 1080. The thought was that NVIDIA was gonna cut down on the CUDA cores and perhaps change the memory from GDDR5X to GDDR5 as you went down in the product stack. So for instance, GTX 1080 has eight gigs of GDDR5X and 2560 CUDA cores, the thought was that the progression down the GTX 1070 and the GTX 1060 would have fewer CUDA cores and less memory. That is the way things kind of panned out for the GTX 1070, which you could find my review of up here. But as far as the 1060 goes, they've actually decided to go with a completely new chip, the GP106. It's likely that we'll see the GP106 chip again when Nvidia releases their GTX 1050 sometime this year. According to NVIDIA, it boosts up to 1.7 gigahertz right out of the box. The Founders Edition card comes with six gigs of GDDR5, which is a huge step up from the previous generation's GTX 960, which came standard with two gigs of GDDR5. Yes, you could get four gig versions of that card, but they obviously cost a little bit more, and it's not what NVIDIA was really pushing, because this is made to be kind of like a low mid-range card. Granted, this version of the card is $300, so it's not exactly a budget option, but when you compare it against the rest of NVIDIA's product stack, it does right now come in at the bottom. So that being said, a low-end card with six gigs of frame buffer sounds pretty good to me. Like the rest of the Pascal lineup, it is fairly power efficient as well. It runs on a single six pin power connector, just like its competition, the RX 480. The rated TDP out of the box is only 120 watts. Now I'm not really gonna get into a lot of specifics about the cooler design. It's obviously very similar to the rest of the Pascal lineup as far as the redesigned reference cooler from Nvidia. The GTX 1060, instead of having a clear window here, has some black plastic. The shroud here has been kind of redesigned to look like I don't know, the Millennium Falcon or something. But the rest of the cooler design is very similar. It's got some new angles along the side here. It's got these cutouts here for airflow. It intakes the air through the front of the card and the blower style fan pushes it out the rear of the card and out the rear of your case. So there's nothing really revolutionary about this cooler in particular, but it is the first time we've seen a reference design cooler on a 60 series graphics card from Nvidia. As far as display outs, on the back you have three DisplayPort 1.4, one HDMI 2 and a DVI. As we've started to see some add-in board partner cards come out, a lot of companies are actually redesigning and reconfiguring the back I.O. to better fit the needs of the customers who are gonna be buying their cards. For instance, a lot of manufacturers are taking away DisplayPort and adding an HDMI, or even cutting one of the display outs entirely. Make sure that you're considering specifically what your display output needs are. Some of the board partner cards are going to be cheaper, but they may not have all the display outputs that you need. So one of the things that Nvidia has done with this card that I really like is that they've shortened the PCB. The blower style cooler actually hangs off the end of the PCB and extends the length of the card, but it is still shorter than the Founders Edition 1070 and 1080. In fact, it's just about the size of the RX 480. They've wired in the six pin PCIe connection down through the cooler and onto the PCB. Now, the reason I like this so much is that it's gonna allow AIB partners to make their own custom GTX 960s in a small form factor. A lot of times people that are buying these GTX 960s are doing it to put it in a mini ITX 
or micro ATX system. And a lot of times you're gonna have space issues in those kinds of builds. Being able to put powerful card in a small form factor because the PCB is smaller does really come in handy. I also really wanna see what happens when companies like EK Waterblocks and AlphaCool get their hands on this card and come out with their water blocks and see really just how small we can make this card inside of a case. Now, I don't generally advocate water cooling components like 60 series graphics cards, just because they are typically lower end and the money that you're gonna spend to water cool the card would be better spent on a higher grade component like a 1070 or 1080. As we'll see in a minute, this is still a very powerful card. It basically falls in line with the GTX 980. Now, considering NVIDIA's history with their product releases, you'd typically expect the next generation card to fall in line with the previous generation step up model. So for instance, this 1060 usually traditionally would fall in line with the GTX 970. But as we'll see in a minute, it actually outperforms the GTX 970 in basically every task. All right, so let's get to the performance numbers and then we'll come back in a second and we'll talk about it. Now, as you can see by these charts, guys, and I hope you noticed, but I was having quite a bit of difficulty overclocking the RX 480. I think it's likely because I'm running on the newest drivers from AMD, which were released after the whole power draw uproar, I guess, a couple weeks ago. Now, the new drivers do reduce the power that the RX 480 is drawing from the PCIe socket. This isn't bad, but I think maybe they've kind of compensated and now it's not drawing enough power to be able to sufficiently overclock. Any overclock I ran, even as little as 2% or something along those lines, would actually return numbers that are lower than the stock settings. This is likely because there wasn't enough power coming into the card to allow it to boost. In any event, it's not really an RX 480 review video, but seeing as this card's main competition is AMD's newest card, I wanted to try to make sure that we had an accurate comparison. Now, if these are the drivers that the RX 480 is gonna be running on from now on, I think it's very fair to compare these results as you can overclock the GTX 1060 and you really can't overclock the RX 480. That is certainly something that plays into a lot of people's decisions. What kind of performance can you get out of this card? not just out of the box, but if you were to play with some settings, tweak it a little bit, and really try to squeeze every frame you can out of the dollars that you spent. So overall, this card really did impress me. It definitely outperforms the RX 480. Now in tasks that are heavy on async compute, we might see the RX 480 pull ahead a little bit. Uh, also right now, Doom with Vulkan is running really well in the RX 480, but that's okay with me because the majority of things that this card's gonna be running are not DX12, are not async compute, are not Vulkan. It's nice to be ready for the future, but if you buy a product only for the future, you're gonna miss out on a lot of things that are happening right now. And right now, this is the card to beat in the sub $300 price range. Surprise, I have a giveaway going on. It's right up here. Go check it out and enter the contest. Basically, all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel. Uh, you get some bonus entries for like tweeting and things like that. But I'm giving away an Amazon gift card for hitting a thousand subscribers. And that's all thanks to you guys. So I definitely appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think of this video down in the comments. You can find me on Twitter at BPS underscore customs. If you're not subscribed, man, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Get subscribed. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.